All right, let's dive right in. Today, we are talking about the secret sauce that makes all your favorite apps feel so incredibly fast and smooth. It's called asynchronous processing, and it's the magic that stops apps from freezing up even when they're doing some serious heavy lifting. You know the feeling, right? You hit upload on a photo or you click buy now and then nothing. The whole screen just locks up. You're staring at that little spinning wheel of doom and it is just the most frustrating experience. Well, that's the exact problem we're gonna solve today. So what's the actual culprit here? It's something called a synchronous process. Now think of it like a single file line. You have to wait for every single person in front of you to order, pay, and get their stuff before you can even begin to place your order. In the world of apps, it means one task has to finish completely before anything else can happen. It's a total roadblock. And that's where asynchronous processing comes in to save the day. Instead of waiting in that line, it's like you can just hand off your order and immediately go find a table or chat with a friend. All that slow, heavy work is happening in the background, which means the app feels instantly responsive to you. So, how does this actually work? A really common way is by using something called a message queue. Let's say you want to apply a filter to a photo. Your app, which we'll call the producer, doesn't do the work itself. Nope, it just fires off a little message, a job, into a queue. That job just sits there, kind of like in a waiting room, until a background worker, the consumer, is free to grab it and do the actual processing. Meanwhile, the app is totally free, waiting for your next tap. Okay, so we've successfully handed off the work. Awesome, but wait a minute, that creates a whole new puzzle, right? If that photo filter is being applied somewhere in the background, how does our app ever find out that it's finished? We can't just leave the user wondering forever. We need a way to get a status update. And there are two main ways to get that update. First, you've got polling. This is the digital equivalent of a kid in the backseat of a car just asking over and over and over, are we there yet? Are we there yet? The app constantly bugs the server. It works, but it can be super inefficient. The much smarter way is using webhooks. This is more like the server saying, hey, don't worry, I'll text you the moment we arrive. It's way more efficient because there's only one single notification and it only happens when the job is actually done. So our app feels fast, we're getting updates, things are looking pretty good, but let's be real, in the world of computing, things go wrong. What happens if that background worker tries to apply the photo filter, but it fails because of, I don't know, a temporary network hiccup? We can't just let the job die. The solution is to build a resilient system using a retry strategy. You see, if a task fails because of a temporary or a transient error, the answer is simple. Just try it again. This is absolutely fundamental for building systems that don't fall over. But it does raise a really important question. How exactly should we retry? Because just hammering the system with instant retries can actually make a bad situation a whole lot worse. One common tactic is called linear backoff. The idea is you wait a little longer between each retry. So you try, wait two seconds, try again, wait four seconds, try again, wait six seconds, and so on. It's simple, but it has a massive flaw. If a bunch of tasks fail at the same time, they might all try to retry at the exact same moments, creating what's called a retry storm and totally overwhelming the service we're trying to help. And that leads us to a much smarter strategy, linear jitter backoff. This is brilliant. It takes the same idea of waiting longer, but it adds a tiny random amount of time, what we call jitter, to each wait. This little bit of randomness is enough to stagger the retries. So instead of everyone knocking on the door at the exact same second, they all arrive at slightly different times. It's a beautifully simple fix that prevents those retry storms. Okay, hold on. We have to talk about this because we just stumbled into a huge, potentially catastrophic problem. Retrying is great for fixing network glitches, but what if the action was processing a payment? If we retry a charge credit card job, are we about to charge someone twice? or create two identical orders in a system? Yikes, that could be a complete disaster. The solution to this giant problem is a concept that is so, so important in system design. It's called idempotency. I know, it's a fancy sounding word, but the idea is actually super simple. An operation is idempotent if you can do it one time, or five times, or a hundred times, and you get the exact same result as doing it just once. The system is smart enough to know, hey, I've seen this exact request before. I've already done it, so I'm not going to do it again. This concept of idempotency is the invisible safety net that makes our digital world work. It's the reason you don't get charged twice when your internet connection flickers during a purchase. It's what prevents duplicate orders from flooding a warehouse. It's what makes it safe to retry API requests and database updates without causing complete chaos. It's absolutely crucial.
So let's zoom out for a second and look at the big picture. We've just walked through a bunch of different patterns and ideas, but they aren't just a collection of random tricks. They are powerful, interconnected building blocks for creating the kind of robust and reliable systems we all depend on. See how it all fits together? You start with asynchronous processing to make the app feel fast. Then use webhooks to get updates without wasting resources. You build in retry strategies with Jitter to gracefully handle temporary failures. And finally, you wrap your most critical actions in item potency to make sure those retries are 100% safe. It's the whole package. And that's really the main takeaway here. These aren't just abstract computer science theories. This is the real world engineering that powers the services you trust every single day. This is how you build systems that don't just work, but work reliably, even when things go wrong and you're operating at a massive scale. But, and in system design, there is always a but. Everything is a trade-off. We've gained all this amazing responsiveness and resilience, so what did we have to give up to get it? Asynchronous systems, for all their power, introduce a whole new layer of complexity. They can be much harder to debug and understand, which leaves us with one final question to chew on. What are the hidden costs of building apps that never, ever freeze?